Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today it's all about transplanting the most amazing tropical tree, the Delonyx regia, also known as the flame tree. Um, I had a whole bunch of seeds sent to me from a broski down in Florida, uh, I believe his name is Doug, and they did not germinate for the longest time. So what I did was I got, I wouldn't say I got frustrated, but I just took them and I put them in random pots throughout the house and I went about my business. Well, if you noticed on a previous playlist, I had about nine show up in one planting, and then I had four actually pop up outside, three of which I sent across the world. One to my Broski Ian at Back Garden Bonsai out in Ireland. Um, one to my Broski Nigel Saunders from the Bonsai Zone up in Canada, and his neighbor Bonsai Jay. All three of them have awesome Bonsai channels, so hopefully um, if you have time and you're going through your Bonsai network, You'll check out their channels as well. Um, so these are really hardy trees. I know that because it took nine and ten days to get them shipped in a closed box container uh, to Canada and to Ireland and they've all survived and all are looking nice and healthy at their houses. These actually popped up in indoors and what I've noticed is indoor a Delonyx Regia or the flame tree um, they grow much taller much faster tons of foliage. Uh, the trees that popped up outdoors they're stubbier, they have a little bit more ramification already, and they have woodier trunk. So I guess depending on uh, your, your zone or your area and what you're looking for specifically, uh, those are my two cents on germinating these indoors or outdoors. Some of them can take a good amount of time. I know um, some seed packets and bonsai starter kits tell you it'll happen within a couple of weeks, uh, but I noticed it was months and months and months later. So don't get discouraged um, if you are trying to germinate trees from seed. It can be very difficult, uh, but very rewarding at the same time. That's what I, my preference, because you have control from the very first second you soak that seed until, you know, every step along the way, the repotting, the pruning, everything, that's all your choice. It's not, you know, buying someone else's tree or digging a tree up in the wild and then making it your own. So that's why I really prefer growing from seed. It's really rewarding. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to get this little guy uh, from growing up with my poinsettia because the poinsettia, um, that's, you know, a Christmas bonsai. And I'm going to want to put it down in the basement so it could turn red so I could bring it out for the holiday season and all these leaves will be all red, red and beautiful. Um, so we're going to put it in the world's smallest bonsai pot, a mame pot, which uh, translates actually to bean, you know, like a little bean. Um, beans that you eat, you know, I, referencing that beans are small. So um, I have some nice bark mulch, pumice, and perlite mixed up in here. And then in this lovely little shoheen pot, I'm going to get the pumice and perlite out of here. And uh, that's where this guy's going to go, because this one is a little bit taller um, and more established. So I don't want to mess with its root base yet. So I'm going to pop it in there and probably prune off that top little canopy there and see if we can't start getting some branching. Um, you're probably thinking if you're uh, new to bonsai or you typically just grow your trees outside, like, oh, what are you doing? You shouldn't repot in the late fall or winter. Um, but pruning and repotting of your tropical trees, if you grow them indoors year round and you have good grow lights and a you know, controlled uh, environment, it's not going to be an issue. It would be the same as me doing it in the spring. So I don't have much to do outside since it is nearing winter. So I'm finally getting to uh, transplant these. This popped up about a week ago, so it should have a re relatively uh, shallow root base. And this one's been in here for a couple of months. And at first I was thinking I would grow them together, but now I know it's time to separate them. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. Let's start with the smallest first. So I'm going to set this bad boy to the side. Actually, get that rock out of there and the soil out of here. It's always easier to, you know, put the soil in after the repotting or during the repotting rather than having your soil in there, digging a little hole and trying to stick a tree in. That may be fine for some cuttings, but it, it's not the best for um, repotting trees or bonsai. So at the bottom of here, I have these little 
biodegradable screens, recyclable, biodegradable. Uh, they, they're part of like these little pouches that are seed starters. You fill them with soil or some of that, those peat moss um, starter caps, and they're great for uh, developing your seeds. So I also use them as screens. So I have the screens down there and a thin layer of my bonsai soil. I'm actually gonna mix this in together. This was the leftover remnants of some, some cacti um, soil that I had. So it's nice tree bark, some lava rock. It's a nice mixture to go with this tropical tree. Now, if you haven't watched my channel before, the Delonyx Regia, it's not seen here, uh, was my first bonsai tree grown from seed. And that one is nearing three years old and looking awesome. Um, but what I'm going to do for the majority of my Delonyx Regias and my Blue Jacarandas is let them grow for the winter. You know, let them grow to the ceiling if they want to, let them thicken up, and then in the spring, give them a nice hard pruning. So for now, I'm letting those grow, but these I want to get fixed before their root base and root system takes over the other tree. So start with the small one first. I mean, look how tiny this thing is. <laughs> I'm going to put a little layer in here, soil. Okay. I want to get in here without disturbing either of them. So I'm going to come in from the outside, see if I can't just get underneath it and get it to pop up a little bit. There we go. I was walking by this poinsettia maybe a couple weeks ago, maybe just a week or so. And I saw this thing popping up. I'm like, that looks suspiciously like a Delonyx Regia. I don't know why I would have stuck a seed into this pot, but it could have actually just been um, in the soil that I planted the, the tree in. Boom. Okay. So not the largest root base, but I expected that. But with very little disruption, I think that's actually going to work out for us. Settle this poinsettia back in there. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at the poinsettia. I've let it grow out crazy. You know, it's got a nice start to the trunk. Splits into three. I've let it really grow out because I wanted a nice pop of red um, during the Christmas season. So I'll prune that back hard in the spring. Does anybody else know that trick? You take a poinsettia, if you grow it indoors throughout the year, and you don't just buy the red ones from the store already done, um, you can uh, put it in darkness for like two weeks and it turns a nice bright red. All right, focus, Jared, here we go. Just make a little hole here. Settle it down in there. Now with this one, putting it in a little mame pot, I'm definitely going to have to pay more attention to the pruning. I don't want it to get top heavy. And it'll just be a slower growth on the thickness of the trunk, but that's fine because it is such a tiny pot. I love doing these little tiny pots. Laura got me 20 of them, I believe, uh, last holiday season. I haven't used them all up because <laughs> It's difficult to find trees that work with them because they get top heavy quickly, they dry out quickly. So one secret I've learned is with these little pots, I put it in like a decorative drip tray like that, or say like this one. And I would just fill this with water and let it indirectly water and suck it up from the bottom because watering from the top makes all the soil pop out, which is a mess. And then um, they dry out quickly if you're just like spraying them every day. So I try to spray them when I'm spraying all my other plants, but for the most part, I indirectly water them by watering the drip tray. And that seems to work. If we have enough time, I'll show you my other Mame Bonsai on this video. I 
you've noticed, uh, if you follow this channel, I have done a bunch of short videos, one minute and under lately, um, because that's a new little option that YouTube is toying with. Videos that are under a minute and recorded vertically. So it's just a way to introduce new people to your channel. And so if you're like, what the hell is he doing recording in the wrong direction and being so short, that's why. So obviously I'm back to full full length videos, which are my favorite. So if you have any comments or questions throughout this, you know, feel free to ask the question. I'm 99% sure I get back to everybody when they comment or ask a question. So that came together quickly. So you see, these are the original leaves when the tree germinates. And then this is the nice little feathery tropical branching that comes out after and leaves out after. So I really think I didn't disturb the root base much at all there. So this one's going to be pretty cool. All right, let's set that aside. This one may be a little more difficult because like I said, it's been in there a couple of months. So let's see. Got some coral in here. My chili pepper bonsai is just going crazy. It's got flowers everywhere, but no chili peppers. I just, I did this grow kit in last February, so they're only about nine months old. So maybe the first year you don't get any chili peppers, I'm not sure. I know my buddy Ian at Back Garden Bonsai. He has a chili pepper bonsai that goes off and has peppers hanging all over it. And I'm completely jealous. <laughs> so I'm trying to do two parts here. Remove the Delonyx without upsetting its roots and also avoid upsetting the chili peppers roots as I'm doing it. Feels like they're a little intertwined, so I'm going to have to manipulate it with a little wiggle. Oh yeah, this thing has some strong roots. Okay, get that one out. What I do is I just follow the root with my finger so that it's not like you're pulling from the top. You're kind of like working it out as you follow it down to the bottom. There's less ripping that way. All right. Boom, boom. As you see, those roots are a little lengthier than its little brother over here, little sister. I'm just going to work it down into the soil. Now, when this thing grows up a little bit, I will establish a root plane. Uh, it seems a little bit high right now, kind of all over the place. But since I don't want to mess with the roots, since it's a transplant and it's a little baby, I will leave that until probably um, the following spring, so 18 months from now. Fill it in. As I make a mess everywhere. All right, that went that went really well. This is my own little mixture of soil, the pumice perlite and a little bit of tree bark. I think it'll do well with this tree. This tree really loves a lot of sun. It likes a lot of water at one time and it also is happy to pretty much dry out before you water it again. Boom. Get this rock in here just to stabilize it. Coral back in there. All right, cool. So let me get you a look at, I'll get this chili pepper back all set up, and then I'm gonna get you a look at uh, my other Delonyx Regia and Blue Jacaranda. 
All right, y'all. So I know I had said I was going to transplant and prune this tree, but after transplanting it, it actually is in a pretty sturdy condition. So it's not too top heavy. It had a nice root base. So I just stabilized it with a little rock over here. I'm having issues with you know, the sun and getting you a view, but that's the rock I had removed before, put it back in and a nice little piece of coral. And I'm going to let this guy grow. I'm assuming it'll probably uh, get a little limp, maybe drop its bottom branches off um, from the transplant and then recover. Because like I said, these are really hardy trees. If you're new to bonsai, these invoke a lot of confidence. Um, you feel good about it because your tree continues to come back. Um, this is one of the cuttings that I have off of the mother tree and it's growing wild and crazy. This is like my monster plant room. You know, anything that's just gone wild, I pretty much have it in here. <laughs> um, and then this is my featured Delonyx Regia. This one will be three years old in February, grown from a seed. And as you see, I prune it back to where it branches and I'm trying to develop a nice thick trunk and a canopy from there. It won't get much taller than this. So for this season, if I could continue to keep it insect free, which they have issues with getting uh, green aphids and spider mites and such. So you got to keep an eye on them. Um, I'll let it grow all the way to the ceiling before I prune it. So we're getting a nice, decent sized trunk on there. It's got a little shway. So I guess it would be somewhere between an upright and an informal upright. And over here, in a previous video, I'd say within this month, uh, or late October, I pruned nine Delonyx Regia that are in here as a forest planting, and two avocado trees. So the avocados have not started to kick off new leaves yet, but the leaves that are there look healthy. And so even though an avocado can be very finicky and just die off with a, a pruning or just randomly, um, I think that we're going to be all right here. And the branches remaining after pruning these baby Delonyx Regia, which they're about the same age as that one, um, they all look good as well. So I feel good about that one. It's going to be a nice, crazy forest. And once it gets established, I'll obviously uh, raise the canopy a bit and probably get it into a shallow pot. But this is just basically... Uh, a training pot. I had the avocados growing in there. I threw a bunch of Delonic seeds in there and surprisingly enough they all grew. All right so over here we have a little backdrop rock. Uh, Laura's mom's a fine artist and so she painted a rock for me and it is actually the um, western side of my property. It's difficult to see with that sun. Let's see if we can't get a better view. There we go. That's incredible how she does that. So I love it because it's on a quartz stone, a nice large piece of quartz. And Connecticut has a really high concentration of quartz. Uh, about 10% of our crust is made up from it. So. Here is the Delonyx Regia that germinated outside. And for obvious reasons, it dropped down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit the other day. I brought it inside um, for the permanent basis. It just happened to be in some soil outside when it germinated uh, during the summer. So as you see, it's this one hasn't received a pruning. It's got a nice woody trunk already. And it's way, way shorter than the trees germinated indoors. Like I said earlier, I sent three of these off. They've all recovered. They look about the same, about the same height, same woodiness, and same health. So, so yeah, I was really happy to share my favorite tree with some of my favorite bonsai broskies. I want to show you my blue jacaranda now because they are really close in um, aesthetics. They have this nice nice leaf structure nice and feathery and light and uh, just tropical none of mine flower yet because probably of all the pruning and they've been grown indoors and they're pretty much babies but I have three in this pot over here as you see if you've grown the planters choice grow kit you know that this is one of the labels blue jack ronda I've got three of them in there 
And as accent plants, I've got this guy just above. It flowers all the time. It crawls out of its plant pot all the time. It's beautiful. It is a emerald lace plectoranthus or tendahali. Beautiful. The leaves are variegated, so see that nice light vein going through it? They go from light inside to dark on the rim. Really do a great job. Oh, I gotta clean up some of the dead growth. But they really they'll they'll bloom. Then the you know a month later they won't be in bloom. They'll grow nice and thick and hardy, and then they'll bloom again. It's really a fun plant to have. So this is one of my um cutting and like little little baby pots that I have around where you know you do a cutting you don't want to waste it like here's a little citrus that popped up some succulents you don't want to waste it but you don't want to just do individual pots all the time I have it on standby like there's a fig in here that I'm going to root and grow out I don't know what these are I thought initially they were Zalkovas but they might even be just weeds so <laughs> I'll look them up eventually Okay, I'm getting off topic. But if you're wanting to do cuttings and things of that nature and, uh, you know, have a starter pot. And having it underneath a pot of flowering plant that drops seeds and grows little babies for you without any work. I mean, that's just, that was a plan, not even a plan that came together. Over here, this used to be four little baby jacaranda in here, but this... Bad Mama Jamma choked the other three out, so it's just a singular now. And like the Delonyx, if I could keep it insect-free, I'm going to grow it all winter long. And over here, it's a nice swirly one. Nice and full. This is probably my largest, healthiest Blue Jack. Boom. All right. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. I hope you enjoyed your time here at the ranch. Uh, the Delonyx Regia, the flame tree, it's an amazing tree. Um, it, if you don't want the Planner's Choice Grow Kit because it has four different types of seeds, find it, treeseeds.com or something like that, and go ahead and order yourself some. You will be very thankful. Whether you have a really hot growing um, grow zone, a really cold grow zone, or you're somewhere in the middle like me, it's a great tree to be able to just grow inside all year long, and it always gives you something to do. Repotting, the pruning, it's just, it's great. So I can't say enough about it. So that's it for me here at the ranch. Uh, there's plenty more to come. So if you did enjoy this video, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and there'll be much more to come. Take care, y'all. Cheers.